In this video, we will get started with electrothermal simulations in ADS. ADS Electrothermal is a multi-physics simulation where a thermal simulator is coupled tightly with electrical simulator and it works with both frequency and time domain circuit simulators in ADS such as S parameter, DC, harmonic balance, transient and circuit envelope. So it's a great benefit for all the designers who are performing these kind of analysis. In the first view, which is our schematic view, where we have a test bench containing a sub-circuit on which we would like to perform electrothermal analysis. And then we have layout of that view, which has all the devices and components placed in the manner you want to place them. Now, as a first step, circuit simulation is performed, which reads the initial temperature information solves the electrical equation and write the power dissipation into a file. This power dissipation file is then used by thermal simulator to read the power dissipation from circuit simulation, solve the thermal equation and calculate the temperature. All these things happen with help of thermal technology file which has all the relevant information to enable the thermal analysis. All the device's temperature which we calculate is then passed back to circuit simulation to continue the loop and this loop will be done till the powers and temperature between these two representations are self-consistent. That means the results are converged. Once the results are converged, you can look at the electrical results of the circuit as well as the thermal results of the circuit which you have just performed. Now with these two information, designers get a lot of insight into reliability, temperature and the circuit performance. Now there are three basic minimum requirements for electrothermal analysis. You need three technology files. Tech.tcl which contains material properties and rules for interpreting various marks in the stack up. Heatlayers.cfg contains the information about the power sources. An stream layer table text file contains the layout mask names, numbers and type etc. Typically, these three files are provided by foundries in a thermally enabled PDK and these can be found under thermal folder of the PDK. But you can also create your own thermal folder in your own tech files depending on the specific process you might be using. Alright, enough of PowerPoint, let's go and see how these things can be run in ADS seamlessly and totally transparent manner to design. Here in my current workspace, I have one test bench. So let me start with the test bench where I have a DC simulation being performed in a sub-circuit called MyFET. If I push down inside this sub-network, you can see a FET device with couple of vias and couple of pins. These devices are coming from our demo kit nonlinear PDK, which is a thermally enabled PDK and it ships with ADS for anybody trying to learn either MMIC design or want to perform electrothermal analysis. In real world, you can have your own actual PDK which you might be wanting to use for your design work. Now, this schematic view also has an associated layout view. Remember, we need to have both a schematic and layout representation of the circuit. Here you can also see one FET device, couple of FET vias, and one pin on the either side of the device, which is kind of similar to what you have in the schematic. Now, once you have these basic things ongoing, we can go ahead and run a regular circuit simulation and in this case, it's a simple DC simulation. You can see the drain current of 211 milliampere and power dissipation of 0.634 watt. Now, this is pure electrical simulation, which we have performed now. Now, if you want to run electrothermal analysis, we can go to the simulation palette, which is called a simulation electrothermal, and you will find a thermal simulator here. And now, by placing that controller on the schematic, we need to assign a particular thermal technology file. And in this case, you can see I'm using demo kit nonlinear PDK. And if I browse to that folder, you will find tech.tcl inside the thermal folder of this PDK. 
Now, by attaching that to our design, we have the right thermal property information, you know, available. Now, if I need to perform circuit simulation, it will go ahead and run that loop which we just talked about in our slide. It will run circuit simulation, calculate the power dissipation, pass that information to thermal simulator, and then the temperature computer will be passed back to circuit. And this loop will continue. And that is what you will be able to see in the status window. So currently, you can see it has performed the first calculation, calculated the temperature, passed this information back to circuit simulation, and this loop went on till we achieve the convergence and the delta temperature difference or delta power difference becomes zero. And once simulation is finished, now you can come back and see the drain current has reduced from 211 milliamperes to 208 and power dissipation has reduced from 634 milliwatt to 626 milliwatt. And all that happened behind the scene and user was totally transparent when this whole loop was running. And along with the circuit simulation result, you also now have this thermal viewer, which is showing you the thermal profile of the chip. And in this case, it was a very simplistic one FET. And you can see a couple of heat sources. Here is the gradient information and the temperature readout for you to understand. And you can also activate few slices to go ahead and slice that information or put a slicer uh, in your mask definition. On the right hand side, you have all the layers in your stack up. Once you move the slider, you can see the temperature profile in a specific layer in your stack. And you can see as you are moving away from the main power consuming layer, you have less and less heat available at that point. Once you come back to the main layer, like in this case Mesa, that's where most of the FET power dissipation is happening, you can see the hot zone. Now, if you want to read out the temperature at a specific point, you can simply right click. Once you do a right click, it puts a marker and on the lower left hand side, you can read the temperature. For example, if I click here, you can read the temperature as 26 degree and right in the center, you have 40.98 degree centigrade. Pretty cool, right? There are a few other views. You can look at the you know window of when you look at the 3D brick or you can open up a surface plot and you can see the you know, thermal profile in terms of surface plot here. And again, same way you can play with various layers. You can move the slider on different layers and you can see how the temperature profile looks like in that particular layer. So pretty useful information. If you want to display the heat sources or the power sources, you can click and now you can see these are the two power sources model for one fed device which i just used and that information will be shown to you there okay there are many more things in this thermal weaver which you can explore on their own by going to some of these menu items or referring to a help guide which will explain each of these options here now before we end this video i would like to show the three files which we talked about in here, under the thermal folder of the PDK I'm using, you can notice tech.tcl, heat layer configuration, and a stream layer table. And here, if you open tech.tcl, which is basically a tickle file, you can read out the information here. You can see gallium arsenide and its temperature-dependent conductivity, and similarly for silicon nitride and so on. And here again, you have the material uh, you know volumetric heat capacity table and these are the layers in your stack up and, and the relevant thickness information background material and the layer information and so on so this forms the basis of the electrothermal analysis which we have done here is the heat layers dot config and here you can see the layer name in the thermal stack versus what's available in tech.tcl so this is basically the layer mapping and here is the stream layer table where you can see all the you know, layers, their purpose, the stream ID information, and the kind of data you can expect. So that's all for this video. I hope you got to know how to get started with running electrothermal analysis in ADS. And in next few tutorial videos, I will
take a deep dive into some of these technology. So stay tuned for more and wish you all the best in your design work.